Hey everyone, it's Tim from Lanessa Farms, Specialty and Heirloom Livestock. Thanks for joining us again today. What is worming shock? What actually is going on when your animal has worms? And what happens after you worm your animals? This is something you need to know. I don't care if you're worming naturally, if you're using chemicals, if you're using injectables, if you ever have an animal that has worms, if you've ever had an animal that has had worms, and if you ever plan on worming, this video will explain everything that you need to know. Stay tuned to find out more. All right, so I had an individual email me recently and they said, hey, I had an animal with a horrible worm load. I checked the eyelid like you told me to, pulled down the eyelid and looked and the animal's eyelid was completely white. Took him to the vet, vet told me what I needed to do to worm him, brought him home, wormed him, and the animal subsequently died. This happens a lot, um, not necessarily a whole lot, but definitely is something that happens when we have animals with a super duper high worm load. And it's something that people don't talk about. Um, I don't know if there's necessarily a term for it, but I'm gonna invent the term right now, and I'm gonna call it worming shock. Um, in humans, we deal with multiple different types of shock. Um, we deal with septic shock, hypovolemic shock, et cetera, so on and so forth. And so today I'm gonna to talk to you about this new coin term that I'm gonna use that's called worming shock because this happens often. And I know that there's lots and lots of videos out there that tell you about how to worm, how to make wormers, all of that good stuff, but they don't ever explain to you what's actually going on in the body of the animal and why these things happen. Like, why on earth would you give an animal a wormer and then they actually get sicker and die? Was it the wormer that killed them? Was it the worms? There's a lot of misnomers about this and a lot of confusion. And I really think that this is what leads to a lot of the issues that we hear about where people say, well, chemical wormers are just gonna kill your animals, they're poison. No, not so much, but I can understand how people can come to that conclusion. The other thing that we hear a lot of is people say, well, I wormed my animal um, two days ago and their eyelids are still pale, what gives? Well, we're gonna talk about that too. This is probably the most comprehensive video that you're gonna find um, that will get down into the nuts and bolts and explain to you what is actually going on inside the animal's body when they have worms, what it's doing to them, and most importantly, what's gonna happen when you give that animal worming medication to get rid of those worms. So without further delay, let's kind of catch up really quick. I'm gonna show you how to check an animal for a worm load. We'll talk a little bit about wormers and then we'll head into the shop and we'll actually get down into the nuts and bolts and see what this is all about. All right, so this is Pepper. Um, I just brought her out here real quick just to show you and I, we've talked about this a lot in our in our in-depth worming videos. If you haven't watched that yet, go ahead and watch it right here. Um, so I just wanna peek at her eyelid real quick and see, and you can see her bottom eyelid is nice and pink. And that's what we're talking about when we're talking about checking for worm load. Um, you'll hear a lot about the Fomancha scale, and we talked about that in our earlier videos that I just referred you to. Um, check that out and because we'll be referring to that when we get into the shop and we get into the deep weeds about worming in general. So with that being said, I'm gonna put Pepper back and we're gonna head into the shop. All right, so this video isn't so much to tell you about what kind of warmers to use or how much warmers to use. Um, this video is more to explain to you what is actually happening inside of the organism, inside of your sheep, inside of your goat, uh, when they have a heavy worm load. Now lots and lots of different types of parasites. We have intestinal worms, we have liver flukes, we have nasal bots, we have lice, we have keds, we have mange, we have all kinds of things. Essentially, all of these parasites are withdrawing blood from the host, which would be your sheep or your goat. Um, and a lot of the symptoms that are manifested are, are the same because of the method that's actually happening inside the body. So. For the purpose of this, I'm going to focus mainly on um, intestinal worms. We'll just call them barber's pole worm. Uh, they're the most common. Uh, but I want you to understand what is happening inside of your animal um, and why we're looking for the things that we're looking for and why that animal can actually uh, run into some seriously deep trouble um, if you are not paying close attention to them. So I've got this, these two lines here and these lines represent the capillary bed or the vasculature 
Um, and so on this side, we'll say this is the intestine. We'll say this is the uh, vasculature. And we'll say that this is the interstitial space. So this space out here represents um, kind of the area beyond that capillary bed. Um, and we'll get to that in a minute. So inside the intestine, what we get is we get these uh, worms that will come up and they will attach themselves to the wall, to that lining of the intestine. And if you've ever seen post-mortem uh, pictures of, of these where they actually take the intestine out and turn it inside out, there's so many of these worms in a full worm load that they are completely lining um, to where there's not even hardly any space in between them. And they are just mowing down and sucking blood off of this animal. There's males and there's females and the females are dropping little eggs and that go out with the waste. And these eggs, they're making thousands and thousands of these a day. And those eggs are going out and landing on the ground so the worm can get repopulated and get reabsorbed by the animal. But what's most important and very, very important to understand is what's going on inside this vasculature. So inside this vasculature, we have all kinds of blood cells and we have proteins that are hanging out and going around. And most importantly, we have red blood cells. And these red blood cells kind of look like they don't look like a donut, but they kind of look like a disc with a divot in the top. And that divot actually increases surface area. You don't need to know that. But what you do need to know is that these red blood cells also carry hemoglobin. And that is what carries oxygen everywhere around the body of the animal. They also pick up waste and bring it back through. Now, that's what these worms want. These worms are after these red blood cells and they get these red blood cells and they start dragging them out of the vasculature in order to feed themselves. So over time, we start getting more and more red blood cells in the worms and less and less red blood cells inside the vasculature of our sheep or goat. And what does that do? Well, you remember when we were outside with Pepper and I actually pulled down her eyelid and I was looking in that capillary bed in there. That capillary bed is this right here. It's this vasculature. And that red color that we saw in her eyelid was actually caused by these red blood cells. Now, when the animal's eyelid starts to get pale, that is because these worms are drawing those red blood cells and that hemoglobin out of the vasculature and drawing it into the worms themselves and we get a decreased number of red blood cells in the system. Now, what the problem is, is when we go to give these worms a treatment to get rid of them, all hell can break loose and that's when you start having your problems. So let's take a look at that and what that looks like. All right, so I've blown this up a little bit for you to understand it hopefully a little bit better. So here we are inside the stomach and this line here represents the abomasum wall. That's the, that's the fourth stomach in the sheep and goats. That's basically their equivalent of our human stomach before things flow into the small intestine. Now here I've drawn you, drawn you a couple pictures of some worms and some parasites and there's a couple things that I want you to pay attention to. The first one, as you can see, they've created an itty bitty hole up in here in the wall of the abomasum so they can actually suck that blood out. And you can see that they're gobbling up all of those red blood cells like we talked about. Now I'm going to treat this animal with, let's just say I'm gonna use ivermectin, which is a very common clear wormer that we use. And so I'm gonna introduce ivermectin into the system. Um, let's say, you know, I've checked this animal, I've checked their eyelids, they're looking really pale. We know why, because these blood suckers are taking all the hemoglobin out of, out of their vasculature up here. And I'm going to introduce ivermectin. And what's going to happen is, is ivermectin is actually going to paralyze uh, these worms to where they can't grab a hold anymore. And it's going to allow them to get flushed out of the system. So my ivermectin comes in, my worms are gone. 
But unfortunately, a couple things are now going to happen. First thing is, is I've got this leaky hole here everywhere where those worms were attached. And although it's microscopic, it does two negative things. It allows waste to get in and it allows more blood and fluids to get out. Blood, fluids, we would call that, uh, well, we're not gonna get in the deep weeds of, of that, but basically it allows blood to get, or waste to get in and allows blood and fluids to get out. And it causes lots and lots and lots of inflammation. So we have inflammation that's happening We have increased blood loss, plus we have increased infection rate because now this area that's normally sealed off that has waste in it now can leak into the vasculature. So you can end up with a whole body infection that we sometimes refer to as sepsis. When you hear sepsis, just think, uh, massive infection throughout the body. So now we've got inflammation, additional blood loss, and infection, possibly. So we already had a problem. We had worms that were in the body. We've given them medication to get rid of those worms, and now all of a sudden our animal starts taking a turn for the worse. And a lot of times that's because we've got lots and lots of inflammation, even more blood loss, and infection can be setting in over the next couple of days. All right, so when we're, we're gonna address these uh, three different items separately. So we're talking about the blood loss, the inflammation, and possible infection. So when we talk about blood loss, this is probably the biggest one that we're dealing with. You know, when you check in that eyelid, and that eyelid is pale and white, it tells us that, you know, the hemoglobin is just gone. Uh, we barely have any hemoglobin. We know that hemoglobin carries oxygen to the body, and without that, the animal will eventually die. So how do we get this problem fixed? after we give them the wormer. Well, after we give them the wormer, uh, we wanna do a couple things. The very first thing is, is we wanna hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. Um, and that is very, very important. The best thing that you can do for this animal is to completely segregate it from the other animals. We don't want it having to compete for food. We don't want it having to compete for water. Um, we wanna make sure that it gets everything that it needs. Unless you know what you're doing, do not go crazy. I read stuff online all the time where people are like giving their animals Gatorade and all kinds of weird stuff. Unless you know what you're doing, unless you've actually read the science on it, don't just start throwing everything but the kitchen sink at your animal because chances are you're gonna screw them up even worse than they already are. So water, good hydration, good quality feed that's made for your sheep or goat. Not something that's made for people, not something that's made for horses, something that's made specifically for your sheep or your goats. This is not a time for you to start reinventing the wheel and coming up with your own snake oil for your sheep or goat. We see this happen over and over and over to where people freak out and they start giving all kinds of interesting things to their animals. Don't do this. You can actually make things worse. Case in point, I had a lady that had an issue with her goats. She wormed them. They started getting more pale and more sick after she wormed them because, we'll, and we'll get into that, um, and so she started giving them garlic and garlic is a blood thinner. She actually thinned out the animal's blood. It bled more than it ended up dying. So again, don't reinvent the wheel. Just stick to the simple things. Water, good quality feed, vitamin B and iron. If you can do all of these things, this will help the animal out immensely. Hydration helps to get the fluid volume uh, back to where it needs to get. Um, the fluid volume, the actual volume of blood will get back to where it needs to be in about 48 hours. Um, the feed, the vitamin B, and the iron are going to help that animal to produce more hemoglobin to help themselves out. Now, you're not going to like this, but this is the reality. It takes four to eight weeks for that animal's hemoglobin uh, level to get back up to where it, it needs to be in most cases of a severe worm load. Um, so it is going to take time. If you contact people and, or contact me or contact someone else and say, well, I wore my animal two days ago and I checked their eyelids and their eyelids are just as bad, they're, they're pale or they're just as bad, that's because they haven't had enough time to make more hemoglobin yet and this process is gonna take time. 
because we don't have very much hemoglobin and because we are not carrying oxygen around the body effectively, you want to avoid any kind of stress and exercise on that animal. Again, that's why we want to keep them segregated off to themselves uh, to prevent anything like that from happening. So in a nutshell, the blood loss, um, you know, once you get rid of that worm blood, you can actually lose more blood. They can actually get more pale within the next day to two days. Um, and this is what we want to do to treat that. All right. So when we talk about the inflammation component, there's a couple different things that you can use and you'll want to talk to your veterinarian about this specifically, but dexamethasone is always a must. If I have an animal that has a really, really high uh, worm load and I worm them, um, which usually doesn't happen here, but if I, if I have to help someone out that that's happening, I always advise giving dexamethasone and it's going to help to uh, curb that inflammation that we're going to get in that vasculature, in that uh, wall of the abomasum. Again, water, 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 very, very important. We want to avoid low pH foods. So if, when we go low pH, we're thinking acidic. Now, some of you may be thinking like, okay, this is the time to throw out the best quality hay to this animal because Tim says that he wants me to get the nutrition back up. You know, very good quality hay tends to have a lot of things like alfalfa in it, and that can have very low pH. It can increase the amount of acid in the rumen, um, and it can cause some problems. So this is a good time. Um, think about you as a person when you have diarrhea or abdominal upset. Do you go out and get spicy foods, or do you try to eat things that are more bland and kind of ease back into it? And that's what I'm talking about here. So this is a good time for things like uh, grass hay, um, very bland foods, water, and again, rest. Um, we don't want to stress this animal out any more than it's already been stressed out, and rest is going to help. Uh, the inflammation should subside within a few days once the animal gets over the initial shock of um, the worming, uh, but this is, this is your key to taking care of that inflammatory response. All right, so our last one that we're going to talk about is infection. So when we talk about infection, um, you know, and this happens in humans too. If we get a hole in our bowel or in our gut to where, you know, when you think of your digestive system, I want you to think of it as, you know, a donut, uh, kind of the hole of a donut. You don't want anything to get out of that hole of that donut and get it into the body. Um, there's kind of a, a clearly defined wall between where all these wastes and toxins are and the rest of your body. And it's the same thing in animals. Once we start getting holes in that bowel, um, or in those stomachs to where fluids can start to go back and forth between the two. And that's when we start having lots and lots of problems. And if you want to see a human that gets an infection in a big old hurry and goes into shock, um, this happens all the time with gastrointestinal surgeries and things like that. So again, we had that worm that was on there and now it's, it's gone. We have little, these little micro holes all over the place and we can start getting some of these waste products that are seeping into the vasculature. It may cause an infection. Um, if you start noticing signs and symptoms of infection, you can go ahead and start treating the animal with antibiotics. I personally, if I had an animal that had a very heavy worm load, I would consider giving them antibiotics right off of the bat, put them on an antibiotic therapy just to prevent any kind of further infection. Again, rust and water um, is going to do a whole lot of good for this animal. So when it comes to checking for infection, um, the gold standard, obviously, when we talk about that initially, is you want to check the body temperature. Um, and it may be significantly increased with the onset of the infection. As we get into sepsis, that, that whole body infection that we talked about, what actually ends up happening is the temperature will drop significantly. Um, blood pressure drops. Heart rate can actually, it depends, it can fluctuate, it can get really, really high, and then it can get really, really low eventual, eventually. But again, if you check an animal, if they really, really seem sick, um, and this is 48 to 72 hours past warming, and their temperature is very, very low, um, you may be in full-blown sepsis. Um, so just something for you to keep in mind. That's why I say, if you have one that's really bad, just go ahead and treat them with the antibiotics up front and save yourself the hassle. All right, so just to recap, 
our post-warming complications, or as I like to call it, a post-warming shock, again, it's due to increased blood loss, increased inflammation, and increased infection rate. This can happen with any kind of wormer. I don't care if you're using all natural wormers, chemical wormers, injectable wormers, whatever. This is what can happen if you let an animal go too far before you worm them. So what do we do to prevent all of this mess from happening? Check your animals often. Check those eyelids. If those eyelids are starting to get pink, uh, out of the red stage, starting to get pink, starting to get white, you need to treat them and you need to treat them right now. Pretend they're your kids or pretend it's yourself. You wouldn't let your kids walk around with a little bit of worms in them, would you? No, of course not. So we need to treat these animals often and early. The earlier you treat these animals, the better uh, outcome you're going to get. That's why it's very, very important for you to keep medication on hand. It is not the time to start looking for medication after your animal gets sick. That's why you need to keep wormers on hand. You need to keep things like vitamin B, dexamethasone, things like that need to be part of your tack box, part of your office that you have there and on hand at all time. The other thing that you need to remember is recovery takes time. Um, we see this happen over and over and over. People check the eyelids. Two days later, the eyelids are still pale. And so they just start pounding warmer to them again. And the animals getting sicker and sicker. That's because you're treating the wrong thing. Again, it's not the wormer that's causing the animal to get sick. It is the fact that they've dropped that worm load and now they're experiencing these things. Again, expect four to eight weeks before that animal's hemoglobin level is back up to par and they're doing good. So I know this was a lot of information. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have questions, comments, concerns, please leave them below. Again, I'm Tim from Lanessa Farms Specialty in Heirloom Livestock. Thanks for joining me again today, and I look forward to seeing you next time.